Yeah, Andy, I can't hear you. No, you're fading in and out, Andy. I'll speak up. I'll speak into the microphone. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. It is now 6 o'clock. I will now call to order this online public meeting. It is Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. My name is Andy Gregg, and I'm the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. Due to COVID-19, regular meetings and public hearings of the Clark County Historic Preservation Commission will be held in hybrid format with both in-person and virtual participation options for commissioners, staff, and the public. This will allow for safe participation by commission members, staff, and any citizen interested in attending. For those of you joining remotely via computer, you should be able to see tonight's meeting agenda on your screen. If you can't see the screen or have joined by phone only, I will be announcing the agenda as we move through the meeting topics. Members of the public and applicants that have joined remotely are attendees, which means you can see and hear the event you have joined via computer or mobile device, or you can just hear the event if you join by phone. Other event participants cannot hear your audio unless you are acknowledged by the commission chair or staff and are unmuted. This evening's agenda is planned as follows. Roll call and introductions, prior meeting notes approval, public comment for subjects other than public hearings on this meeting's agenda as there will be specific public comment periods as part of the hearings. A funding request for the Clark County Historical Museum Speaker Series. New business will include brief discussions of the 2023 Southwest Washington Regional History Day Contest, the City of Vancouver Review of Boards and Commissions, a legislative update, and input regarding a potential retreat scheduling. Old business updates and announcements, including conversations on the subcommittee planning and the camp training, good of the order, and adjournment. We will now have a roll call of the HPC members who are present for this meeting. Commission members, please say, I'm here, after I call your name. Jan Bader. Here. Julie Bond. I'm here. Morgan Frazier. I'm here. Elaine Thatcher. I'm here. And Andy Gregg, I'm here. Please let the notes reflect that Heidi Mandler Huff had an emergency and her absence is officially excused. On to uh, meeting note approval. Does anyone have any comments on the draft of the December 7, 2022 meeting notes? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion for approval of the December 7 meeting notes. I'll make a motion to approve the, the December meeting notes as written. Thanks, Morgan. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jan. It's been moved and seconded that the December 7 meeting notes be approved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, let the notes reflect that it was uh, an unanimously approved. We'll now take public comment on any items besides today's meeting items. We will again begin with the attendees in the room. Mr. Richardson. Please approach the microphone if you'd like to make a comment at this time or reserve for later on the agenda. Uh, should I wait till you talk about the speaker series? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We'll now take public comment from online attendees. Susan, can you please read the instructions? And we only have one person online, Holly Chamberlain, who is aware of the instructions. So I will just let her get started.
Thank you and good evening commissioners, staff and guests. I have some information from the historic trust to share tonight at Providence Academy. Sarah architects continue to refine the design for the South landscaping project and the city has completed its review of the parking renovation. The archaeological permit application process is underway. The trust is very grateful to PBS Environmental, which generously provided pro bono arborist report preparation for the landscaping re renovation project. The interior study report prepared by consultant Jessica Ingham and is done. The trust is grateful for National Trust grant funding for that project, which is an important tool for planning and prior prioritizing future preservation work. The Trust continues its partnership with the Ne Plus Ultra Jazz Orchestra for First Friday concerts in Providence Hall. Tickets are $10 at the door. Leasing for both commercial units and event spaces is going well. The recovery from changes in office usage accruing to the pandemic continues. At Officers Row in the West Barracks, winter storms have taken a toll in reserve landscaping. In, additional, in addition to the usual down branches and leaves, a large Port Orford cedar west of the Howard House came down. The tree had been severely damaged during last summer's heat dome. Fortunately, it fell to the north rather than to the east onto the Howard House. Two new trees have been planted. In an unusual turn of events, after many years of occupancy by the same tenants, both the single family dwellings on McClellan at 611 and 701 will soon be available for leasing. Historically, these are the hospital steward quarters built in 1888 and the circa 1906 hospital sergeant quarters. Both of these buildings were formerly located next to the post hospital and were moved because of the construction of Interstate 5. The Trust has prepared one of six review requests for the installation of improved drainage at 611 and the addition of handrails by the front steps at 701. And those are under review by the National Park Service. The plans for the, have been completed for the Grant House roof replacement project and bid packets have been distributed. Construction is weather dependent, but will start as soon as possible. Perhaps any local groundhog equivalents will let us know tomorrow when spring is coming. For announcements, we have the Vancouver Barracks Military Association partnering with the Trust for a free public presentation on Waiting for the Cold War to Heat Up. This free military history talk is set for February 23rd at 7 p.m. at the Howard House at 750 Anderson. The Trust is once again working with the City of Vancouver and projects around the state who are advocating for state funding to support the Heritage Capital Projects Program. The City is in line to receive a grant to replace the roof on the Howard House. We thank the Commission again for the letter of support for that grant application and now note that your personal advocacy and Commission advocacy would be welcome in helping our legislators understand the importance of the program. Since 1995, nearly 400 preservation and interpretation projects have received over 96 million in state funding and in turn generated 166 million in local and private investment. I will send additional information to county staff when I email this report. Please save the date, March 4th, for the Southwest Washington Regional History Day contest. The theme is Frontiers in History, People, Places, and Ideas. The contest will be held at iTech Prep. The competition draws students from all six Southwest Washington counties, and event organizers, excuse me, organizers are trying especially hard to attract judges from outside Clark County. If you or anyone you know is interested, please contact me at holly.chamberlain at thehistorictrust.org and I will connect them with the volunteer coordinator. The Trust is thrilled to be cooperating with Vancouver's Downtown Association on the annual Revitalized Wall Conference coming to Vancouver in October. As part of VDA's proposal, the Trust pledged two days of complimentary event space usage at the Academy. Conference planning is underway. DAP and Washington Trust staff toured the Academy and Historic Reserve event spaces this morning, and we are looking forward to filling them up in October with preservationists from around the state. Thank you. Holly, if you could stick around, I think um, you provided the seamless segue into our, uh, our first item of new business, that it was about the uh, Southwest Washington Regional History Day. And your remarks and explanation 
exceeds my own uh, by far. And so I would appreciate if we could uh, keep you handy because uh, I'm a former participant uh, in the uh, Regional History Day and can underscore the call for judges uh, to take part. And I'm encouraging fellow commissioners, if they're able to um, be involved. And so I'd, I'd appreciate it if uh, we could uh, rely on Holly to be the contact person to facilitate the uh, registering uh, participants. Holly, would you agree to that? Absolutely, happy to help. And so um, if you could say your contact uh, email, holly.chamberlain at, if you could say it slowly so we can write it down, that'd be great. Surely, uh, holly.chamberlain at thehistoriktrust.org. Great, thanks so much. And that's on uh, the first Saturday in March. That's correct. Thank you, Andy. Okay, appreciate that very much. Um, one final comment on the uh, History Day contest. Before uh, COVID uh, took the wind out of our, uh, our sails somewhat, if not uh, a great deal, uh, I had hoped to um, encourage student participants in the Southwest Washington Regional History Day to use the projects and other expressions of uh, um, history in, term, in, in keeping with the theme to um, help publicize and raise the profile of our What's Your Story to have folks who uh, represent uh, populations and communities that uh, were underrepresented would be a, a fine showcase for, uh, to, for those stories initially. And so uh, I'm going to go with an eye to see how uh, that could be carried out and, and as part of my legacy as chair. Continuing on a new business, uh, the COV reviews uh, City of Vancouver review of boards and commissions. Um, and Jason, as a side note, I did take part on behalf of the Clark County Historic Preservation Commission in January. Or Greg, yeah, I'm sorry, Jason. Um, do we want to go back to the speaker series funding request? Did we, I skip over that? You, just yeah, because of the connection with. Oh, the because day. of Holly's fine segue. Okay, great. Thank you, Jason, for your forbearance, and uh, we will uh, take up the Clark County Historical Museum speaker series funding request. And I apologize for the gaffe. Well, good evening. My name is Brad Richardson, the Executive Director for the Clark County Historical Museum. Um, and I just want to thank you for considering the request. And uh, obviously, a matter of months ago, I came and uh, discussed our season. And really, my purpose for being here this evening is just to invite you to join us tomorrow evening for our first speaker series event. Uh, the museum will launch its 2023 speaker series on February 2nd with Columbia River High School student Luke uh, Hildreth. Uh, presenting the Chikolov Transpolar Flight to Vancouver. Uh, and this is going to be a really great program. Uh, Luke is a high school senior participating in the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program at Columbia River High School. And we're really great to have, uh, or excited to have this emerging historian come and present for this talk. And so we would love to have you come out and join us for that evening. And those are all my comments that I have for tonight. Great, thank you. Um, this will require uh, some discussion and a, uh, a vote to approve. Um, are, is there any comment regarding um, the application for uh, funding the speaker series? Or if not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the request. Andy, didn't we talk about this at the uh, December meeting? We did, and so uh, because we're now in a new fiscal year, we uh, have the capacity to uh, uh, formally approve this. So it has been discussed, but I wanted to uh, open the floor for any comment on the part of colleagues. Well, the only comment I have is uh, I think that we should fund the um, series again. I think it's a great Great outreach. So may I take that as a motion, Commissioner Frazier? Uh, I thought we were discussing it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I want other okay. people to talk to. 
Okay. <laughs> if they have anything to say, <laughs> then I'll make a motion. Okay. Any uh, input from colleagues? I'll just second what Morgan said. I think this is a um, just one of the one of the reasons that we have this funding. I think is to to fund something like this. The speaker series is a great resource for our community, and um, I think we should continue to fund it. Any further input? And I need to recuse myself since, uh, although I am no longer on the board, I've term limited out, but uh, um, I'm still doing strategic planning and other stuff at the museum. So I probably not need to not vote on this one. Thank you, Jen. Well, I'd entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the 2023 funding of the speaker series at the Clark County Historical Museum. I'll second it. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that the $2,000 request on the part of uh, Clark County Historic Museum uh, be approved to fund the speaker series for 2023. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? And Jan Bader's abstention is noted. I'm making a note of that. Thanks, everybody. And uh, now we'll uh, welcome Vice Chair Jan Bader with a legislative update. All right, thank you. This actually is going to be uh, quick because uh, I essentially sent you the the update, but there were two bills in the legislature this year uh, in the House, House Bill 10, 1026 and House Bill 1042 that um, were some cause for consternation among the preservation community. Uh, I am participating with the Washington Trust on their public policy committee, as is Holly, who's on this call. And um, so both of those bills, these bills are aimed at uh, getting housing through the permitting pipeline more rapidly, which is a great goal. Um, but the, the way they were written would have removed the Historic Preservation Commission from from our review role in um, in new in residential construction and well in buildings that are being repurposed to housing that are, you know, historic buildings. So, um, they were able to work with the sponsor of the, both these bills and get an amendment to the language that that uh, it clarifies that this this does not take the Historic Preservation Commission's role out of the loop here. Um, I did send an email to Jason and also to the city's lobbyists that uh, one concern that was also raised was that the public facilities districts um, might also be cut out of the loop and city has the city center redevelopment authority who is actively engaged in uh, residential construction down in, in the downtown area. And they probably do not want to be uh, eliminated from that review process either. And that did not get addressed in the um, amendments that were made. So, uh, we'll, but I suggested to Jason, they have the law department look into whether it even applied to them. So anyway, so. The bottom line is we don't need to take any action on those bills. The, the concerns specific to the Historic Preservation Commission were addressed through the amendments and they are continuing to move through the legislative process. I can't remember, there's some huge number of bills that were introduced this year. So we'll see, uh, these have made it out of committee, but there's still a long way to go before they actually get adopted. And they're part of a package of, uh, of bills aimed at uh, uh, providing additional housing more rapidly. So we'll see how this goes. Anyway, um, I did not attend the uh, public policy committee and the heritage caucus this week because it would have been 5 a.m. here and it was just a little early for me. So, so I'll look forward to hearing how, how those, if Holly has anything to say about how uh, things uh, happened this week where, where there are, whether there were any additional concerns. 
Well, thank you, Jan. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend this morning as well due to a conflict. So we'll have to wait till uh, next week to learn more. Thank you, though. Thank you, Jan. Jason, City of Vancouver Review of Boards and Commissions. Jason, I'm sorry, you're muted. Right, I think I would have learned by year two and a half at this point, but apparently not. My apologies. Um, so the city periodically reviews its uh, boards and commissions, and this time around, uh, the Clark County uh, Historic Preservation Commission is one of those that is being reviewed. And essentially, we're just looking at um, is the board serving its intended purpose? Um, does the board have the resources it needs? And more recently, um, is your mission supporting the cities? And I don't know about the county, but I know the city has um, some recent diversity, equity, and inclusion policies and principles that we're looking to incorporate into um, our new kind of mission and vision statements for the city. So um, some of you, I believe, received um, a link to take a survey a few months back. I know Commissioner Greg, and I'm not sure about Vice Chair Bader, um, but you should have been um, contacted by our Board and Commission um, um, City Contact, Rebecca Small, who's leading this effort with some additional questions. Um, we don't have any results in terms of uh, where things are going at this point, but the end goal would be that we're going to report out to Council on the outcomes of all of these um, all of the analysis that's done on the various boards and commissions. So at this point, it's just an update to let you know that this is happening. And um, I do think, um, as we'll probably talk a little bit more about in the re retreat discussion, there is probably some opportunity for um, some training and whatnot to help you all um, succeed in your volunteer roles. That's all I have. Thank you, Jason. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the interview and I thought it was uh, positive and productive. So uh, hopefully the uh, report will reflect that. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have uh, one other new business item the, uh, to consider uh, the idea of a retreat for commission members. And clearly, um, we have uh, busy professional lives for our, for our membership. And so I think timing will be uh, a concern uh, to, so please think about how uh, a retreat may be accomplished. Some suggestions where it could take place the afternoon before a regular monthly meeting. So as uh, to take advantage of uh, the fact that people would be here. Um, another option could be uh, on a Saturday. And so what we're requesting is that um, commission members consider what they would like to see as possible agenda items, uh, willingness to uh, take part, and potential time and place for uh, this to occur. And this item about uh, retreat is also concomitant with the next item, which is an old business and update that is also um, my duty, is about the subcommittee planning. And so uh, what I would like to do is request that uh, individual commissioners could either contact me or contact staff with uh, suggestions and ideas regarding retreat uh, topics and elements that might be beneficial, especially as we have uh, two new commissioners coming on the 1st of July, as uh, well as uh, in the nearer term, uh, some subcommittee planning with the idea that at our March meeting that we would be able to populate the uh, demolition committee, the outreach committee, and the design review and standards committee. And so, uh, We've uh, had brainstorming sessions. There's been uh, good ideating, as they say, around uh, these, uh, these uh, potential service areas. And I'd like uh, colleagues to please consider 
this in the, in the coming weeks with the idea that we could have uh, a, an informed discussion regarding a possible retreat as well as to uh, indicate which commissioners are willing to serve on the uh, three committees that we've listed here, demolition outreach, design review and standards, or uh, other possible uh, subcommittees, ad hoc committees as uh, commissioners see fit. Any questions about that? I have a question, Andy, this is Julie. Okay. So with the, uh, the ideas for the retreat, it sounds like there's interest in the suggestions occurring after we get the new commissioners or is there a kind of an open-ended, it could be sooner than that, or is the preference that we wait until we get our new commissioners? I th well, if you're asking um, what a preference is, I could tell you my opinion. I think it would probably be, if you recall, the, um, the orientation is about as close as we have to a retreat in terms of telling people what they're, uh, what they're likely to expect. And so there's, a, um, and I'm sure com fellow commissioners will agree, it's a lot of on the job training and learn as you go. And so in as much as we have one open seat and that uh, I will be term limited at the uh, end of June, that there will be two commissioners who are brand new. And then we have two other commissioners who will have one year's experience. And so I'm, I'm concerned about the, uh, the, the request for people's valuable and scarce time especially because we have working professionals on the commission. And so um, it would be my sense that because we have a limited amount of time that we can devote, that the uh, brand new commissioners, uh, we, we would wait to have a retreat until uh, the two new seats are filled. And you could invite past uh, commissioners to take part at the retreat. I mean, they could be of counsel or they could, uh, they may be willing to come back to uh, give the benefit of their experience. And it, I'm, I think it's nice to have former members whom we can consult who have uh, faced similar issues, who have faced similar challenges and how they successfully overcame the obstacles. And so I'm thinking for the retreat, if you could, if we could spend uh, some time as an agenda item in the next few months, hammering together a, a very effective, valuable, and uh, purposeful agenda that could take place after the two seats are filled. Now, for the committees, uh, the time is of the essence on those, and I would like to uh, have people to consider what, what they would like to take part in with the idea that at March we would be able to uh, uh, say, yes, the demolition subcommittee will be composed of commissioners one, two, and three. And if you're interested in more than one topic, you can serve on more than one. But you know, I, uh, uh, I'm so, uh, Go so, ahead. You know, now that uh, Susan mailed out the, uh, the camp potential uh, topics, it looks like a chunk, a pretty significant chunk of what we had briefly discussed might be part of a retreat, like meeting procedures and the ethical framework is what camp is proposing to do for the training. So it almost seems like we could uh, you know, sort of achieve two things at the same time. We would get the camp training from the, the national professionals and it will cover a lot of the topics that we had talked about having as part of the retreat. And then the other piece is, you know, assigning the committees and having the committees go out and start doing their work, which could be done as just part of the, the meeting. So we may not need to do a retreat if we are going to indeed follow through and do the camp training for this year. So you're saying, so Jan, you're saying that if we take part in the camp menu, then it might um, negate the need to have a, a separate retreat. Uh, the way, I mean, there, I'm looking at the, the camp stuff and it's, you know, legal basics, legal ethics, meeting procedures. I mean, a lot of the things that we, we talked about might be part of, a, you know, the kind of boring stuff that might be part of a retreat. Um, 
So if we're going to do the camp training, I, I think we don't need to do a separate retreat for the commissioners this year. Um, I also was looking at the camp stuff because I was thinking, oh, there's other people in the community like Holly and Brad and, you know, one of his staff and certainly staff for the commission. So there might be other people, previous, previous commissioners that would benefit from taking part in the camp training as well. I also thought we might uh, reach out to other historic commissions to see if they want to partner, you know, and some help with some of the cost. This might it's be another 30 attendees. I, this might I, be an opportunity to invite the uh, Vancouver Heritage Art and, and Cultural Commission members, and that would be some, and you know, we're trying to build those bridges between the two uh, advisory groups. I, I will say in terms of the inviting other commissions, I think there's a lot of value in that. But when I was speaking with Marie, uh, the director of the NAPC, she, I had mentioned that to her and she said that she, they would, they would be happy to do whatever we decided, but she felt that it's, it's easier for them to tailor the camp trainings to our context. If we're, if we keep it to within the community and that community's context. So, if we did choose another 1, we probably want someone who has a similar kind of similar experience, similar culture. As we do, if we did, because yeah. just because we would like, in addition to those trainings that you're mentioning, Jan, I think there's some other substantive. Um, pieces that they can offer us that kind of delve into some other things more deeply. And I think it would be helpful for us to hit on those 2 in the in the camp. If we do the camp. Yeah, I. I agree. There's there's certainly some options here, and you know, since our commission covers all of Clark County, um, I, anyway, I would just like to recommend that we we don't just limit it to our we don't actively recruit other commissions to join us, but that we open it up to other people in our community who work in the preservation realm, and they can choose to you know once we get the agenda set for the camp training, if there's parts of it they're not interested in. You know, they can choose to only attend part of the camp training and maybe we can structure it in such a way that that the stuff that's very specific to our commission. You know, is at certain times and then. Other other times are things that are more broadly of interest to, to again to, to people in the community who work in this field, because it would be nice to sort of build that. Yeah, you know, that group of preservationists in the community who who can. Uh, yeah, you know, interact with each other and support each other. Yeah, and I, I mean, I do like the idea of of joining with another commission. I think we would just have to be thoughtful about how we select that or right. you know, how we extend that invitation. But this is the menu has a lot of really great things. I, I would also just throw out there that it may be something that we could do in conjunction with a retreat where, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be one or the other that it could be maybe the retreat part could just be simply some team building like a half a day or something or a quarter of a day or something right and then the rest could be a training like we could you know just consider a, a hodgepodge of possibilities but is this something we or this is just something to throw out for a future discussion i'm guessing or well or i i want to clarify here so um We've kind of uh, the retreat scheduling discussion and camp training have kind of morphed together. So let me just say, I would like to have the, the subcommittees pop. I would like volunteers for the subcommittees so that we have those in place in March. Now we can discuss. Uh, and we can discuss camp and we can discuss uh, yeah. retreat uh, either singularly or together with the idea that we will. Uh, We'll take some action on on either or both. Hi, Andy. This is Elaine. Um, sorry to break in here. One of the reasons I remember we didn't have subcommittee. Oh, can't hear you. Can't hear you, Elaine. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you, you are. Now? Hello. Well, keep talking. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, one of the okay. reasons that I didn't think we finalize subcommittees in November and December is that we are going to go through and have each person who is planning on being a committee head create a descriptor of what they intended to 
working on that committee, but the time oh, wow. and for TV and oh, yeah. we sort of input would that. be going into so that we could look at our lives and decide if we could dedicate what what was needed for that committee. Um, is there a way that we could get those so that we could I think what Elaine's talking about is when we talked about subcommittees in the past, we talked about kind of doing like a little write up, of, especially for Elaine and Heidi about what would be expected, like timelines, because they're just so busy. Um, and I think that's what Elaine is referring to, because um, we right. did what's, talk what's about What's the goal that. of the subcommittee? I mean, what's what's the subcommittee's task? And then how, um, you know, how much of a time commitment are we looking at? Yeah, and I, so, and I could, uh, I could write something up for the demo. Thank you for bringing that up, Elaine. I could bring, I could write something up for the demo um, subcommittee because um, it, it is moving. You know, we're actually, we're moving. We, we had a meeting and Jason's doing some research and, you know, so I think I could write that up and send that out to you, Susan. And then maybe Julie I could do the. Uh, what I was just going to say. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I planned on writing something. I will say, though, I can't. I cannot tell you how long, how much time it's going to take. I really have no idea, but I can but, just talk, just write up what we would be working on. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, and then I think whoever joins, then we can decide how often and things like that. Right. Yeah, I would find this is Elaine again. I would find that hugely helpful. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for that reminder. Yeah. Having in that that break in January, you know, it's a little. It's a long time. It's refreshing. <laughs> yeah, but so, well, when you're young, like Lane, you can remember these things. <laughs> so if everybody could, if, well, an outreach was Andy. So if the three of you could just write, you know, a very brief description of what you see your subcommittee doing, you know, in the next week would be great. And then send it to Susan so she can get it to the whole commission so that People can look at that and then let Susan know which or Andy know which subcommittee they want to serve on. I think that would I'll be, be sure to do. Out, I'll provide outreach uh, um, summary. Yeah, so if the 3 of you could do that, then 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 that'll help inform people's decision on what they which subcommittee they want to sign up for. It doesn't I mean, do like 2 paragraphs, whatever. Okay, so thank you so everyone. I, the goal is Andy to have the subcommittees assigned at by the March meeting. Yes, that's that's my goal. Okay. Any further uh, input or discussion regarding the camp training proposal? So oh, I have a few things to share. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Susan. I, I mean, I think we need to make a decision on this and figure out which topics we want to. You know, if we're going to do this, which I, there was a lot of enthusiasm for it. And if we are, you know, they sent us some samples of the, uh, you know, training, um, like, you know, what, is it going to be virtual? Is it going to be in person? You know, is it going to be 3 trainers? Is it going to be 2 trainers and make those. Decisions about topics and about how we want to do this and start. Trying to get this, this nailed down. It sounds like Andy, your suggestion was that. A training like this would be most beneficial once we have the new commissioners on board. So maybe we're looking yeah. at a September or October, November time frame for this. Maybe maybe September before uh, revitalize Washington. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and then the other question I had was for Susan because usually when we talk about these kind of things, we talk about budgets. Like, what's our budget? So it's hard to choose, you know, what, what can we afford as a commission? Jason, what was so, in the budget this year? 10 a year? Yeah, and it just re up So we're back to 10 um, as of January 1. And so I didn't, I don't believe I've ever seen any costs associated with camp, but if you want to send that um, my way or Susan's way, we can. It's on the last it's on page. The last page. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I don't so like that. the 4 topics 2 trainers is $6,000. And we just gave Clark County. Historical museum 
two thousand dollars. So that leaves us two thousand dollars for the rest of the year, right? Right. So Wait, let me let me interject for yeah. I'm sorry. Let me interject for just a moment. You might recall we talked to DAP staff about uh, potentially funding the camp training, and they've given us a verbal approval basically that we received funding to pay for the camp training through uh, some leftover CLG funds. So we still have to apply. Um, I don't think it's 100 percent, but um, once we get an idea of the number of sessions and the camp core, which has um, six different sessions, is their, their main uh, kind of training. And that is 9,000 in person and 5,500 uh, virtually. Um, but once we get an idea of the topics we want to cover, we decide. We um, I recommend that you decide uh, on that. Then we will apply for the DAP funding, and hopefully it will be approved. Um, and then we can talk more with NAPC and get it all scheduled. Sounds good. That sounds great. Uh, I yeah, like and if that's to, the uh, case, I say go for the go for the gusto. Um, you know, you go know, for this would, all six topics. <laughs> I'd like to suggest we try to go for an in-person training rather than a virtual one. I, I just second think that. It'll be more beneficial to have everybody in the same room. Much um, more dynamic. Yeah. So, so I just want to. So these materials. I have had them because I've talked to Marie back in October, but it's been a while since I've really sat down and read through them. I just know I was very excited about it. There are a lot of different subjects on them on that they had on there that I would like to personally take a little like a moment to read through and and so forth. But I agree if the, if it's only six, I felt like there were more than this. I felt, felt like there were a couple different options. Um, is this something we need to decide right now? Or what, what's no. the what's the ask right now? Is the ask just to decide if we want to do camp, and if so, we say yes, and then everybody goes back and kind of figures out what their recommendations are for the content. Or do you guys, as leadership, like Jan and and Andy, decide like what's our? What's no, our I think uh, we need we need input and we need uh, buy-in of stakeholders, and also it'll be uh, important to find out if we're successful in uh, getting matching funds or if we're able to get a grant to help defray the costs. Because as uh, Morgan pointed out, if uh, they're willing to pay the majority, then you might as well elect to uh, make the most of the experience. So the ask that I was thinking about was um, for everyone to consider the topics that they're interested in. There are additional topics listed in that handout that I emailed. Um, since we've talked about the one week time frame, maybe everybody could email me individually the topics that they're interested in and I could see how those align. Um, and if we could talk about some possible, well, we've already talked about some possible time frames, but um, uh, after July, but maybe you want to get a little bit more specific than that. Um, and I think we we covered in person, um, and then uh, I'll get an estimate from NAPC. And I think a meeting with NAPC would be a good idea to have a short discussion about some of the details. And if anyone wanted to attend that with staff, you'd obviously be welcome. So let me know if you're interested in that. Um, and then we'll get the DAP funding going because I think that's going to take a little bit of time. And NAPC let me know that it takes about one and a half to two months for them to schedule as well. And we're talking a little bit far farther out, but with both of those time frames, I think getting started sooner rather than later is a good idea. I agree. Yeah, thank you, Susan. Sure. Thanks. That's really promising. Appreciate it very much. And I see that I, did, I didn't know about that. <laughs> I see we can have up to 30 attendees. So that's great. So that's again, beyond the commission. Andy can come back. Alex Gall. I mean, Brad and his couple staff that he's Thanks, got this might be applicable to. So <laughs> that'd be great. 
<laughs> you know I will. <laughs> I know you will. Okay, so we're gonna okay. send Susan. We're gonna look at this list of topics and send Susan. Do you want it in priority order? That would Susan? be great. Okay. All right. Any Sounds further? good. Okay, thank you. It's now time for good of the order. I want to thank all of my fellow commissioners for attending tonight and enthusiastically participating. I appreciate that very much. And thanks also to staff. Now, I'm the only one here in the room tonight of the commissioners and the uh, the new cables and the new, uh, uh, as we used to say back in the day, the new AV setup, working pretty well. So thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other input? Any comments? Hey, Susan, because we're um, we've demonstrated we're really bad at following up on stuff we discuss at the meeting. Could you just send out a reminder to everybody in the next day or two that everyone's supposed to get your committee, you know, or well, so first we're going to get the committee descriptions from the three chairs and then we'll we send that out and also a reminder to people on the camp thing because we we seem to be bad at remembering this stuff so absolutely i actually already put it on my calendar to do that so i will follow okay. up and uh, if i don't hear from anybody i will send a reminder okay that sounds good thanks, thanks. susan you bet at this time, I'd accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. I motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Elaine. I'll second that. Is there a second? I'll second Thank that. Thank you, Morgan. And wherever you may be, um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Good night, everyone, and thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Night, everybody. Susan. All right, thanks.